Whales are the largest creatures in the sea. The species known as the blue whale can reach 30 meters in length and weigh more than 130 tons. Yet despite being so large and heavy, blue whales can comfortably dive down to the depths of 800 to 1000 meters and quickly rise to the surface again. Imagine a huge ship weighing 150 tons, 30 meters in length. If that ship were to sink and lie on the seabed 1,000 meters down, it would take years of work to raise it to the surface once again. Yet the whale can regain the surface from such a depth in as little as 15 to 20 seconds. Because the whale's bones are made from a spongy substance and are filled with fat, by way of which it is easily able to rise to the surface from the enormous depths. Divers risk the danger of the bends caused by differences in pressure if they rise to the surface too fast. The air inside the lungs cause air bubbles to form inside the blood vessels by suddenly entering the circulatory system. These air bubbles can prove lethal since they damage the order present in the blood flow. Yet other whales like us breathe air. They never encounter such a problem. because as they dive they move with empty lungs unlike human beings with full ones since their lungs are not filled with air there is no danger of their suffering from the bends as that air mixes with the circulation yet it is here that the real question emerges if whales who do not fill their lungs with air, how are they able to avoid suffocating from the lack of oxygen? The answers to that question shows us that the whale possess a flawless structure. These animals' muscles contain a high level of the protein myoglobin. These proteins bind to the oxygen molecule and preserve it. In other words, the oxygen the animal needs is stored directly in its muscles rather than in its lungs. In this way, whales swim for long periods without breathing and are able to dive right down to the bottom of the sea. Myoglobin is also found in human beings, but at a lower level so it does not allow us to swim in the same way. This biochemical arrangement, unique to whales and dolphins, is of course clear proof of a marvelous system in its creation.
When December comes around, the whales start migrating because they need to move to warm waters in order to give birth. Every year in December and January they swim from the Arctic Ocean to California on the southern coast of North America. This calving site is of a special importance to their survival. It is essential that whales give birth in warm waters if their calves are to survive. The most noteworthy feature of this time is the way that pregnant females eat nothing and feel no need to do so. The mother-to-be feeds in the nutritional rich northern waters throughout the days of the summer. She thus acquires a thick layer of fat containing more energy than she will need on her long migration. She gives birth as soon as she reaches the warm waters. For several months the calves feed on nothing but the mother's milk. This is rich in fat and protein, and thus the calves grow quickly and store fat in their bodies. Yet a miraculous phenomenon takes place in the way the calves feed. If they were to suckle from their mothers, then seawater would enter their mouths along with the milk. There is a ring of muscle around the female's nipple. When the mother contracts this ring, pressure is set up and she is able to squirt the milk directly into the calf's mouth. This is no normal milk. It is a fatty, almost solid substance. This means that it does not dissolve in the sea water. This substance the calf drinks, or rather eats, dissolves in its stomach. As this foodstuff dissolves, it also meets the calf's water requirements. As we can see, Allah has bestowed the best possible system on the calves to allow them to feed properly. Right from the very beginning, Allah knows what the calf will need and the kind of body structure it will have. Because it is Allah who created the entire universe, from the earth to the sky, and who maintains that creation at all times. His knowledge enfolds all things. The seven heavens and the earth and everyone in them glorify Him. There is nothing which does not glorify Him with praise, but you do not understand their glorification. He is all-forbearing, ever-forgiving.